welcome all today we are going to solve some problems of j mains which will be helpful for your coming examination so let us start the problem before we start each and every maximum of 2 minute to solve it because i have considered only j mains kind of questions so please you pause the video and try to solve by your own before seeing the solutions so let us see the first problem the first point to observe is when y is e to the power x by a and y is l a and y equal to l n x whatever may be the graph now according to the problem they have to touch at only one point so if these two graphs touch they have to touch at the point where x and y coordinate are equal so let's say it touch at a point a comma e tangent to the line y equal to x so derivative y dash i am selecting curve number 1 is e to the power x y a the slope at that point must be 1 so from here we get e to the power x is a implies x equals l so alpha 20 21 be the roots of the equation x to the power 20 21 minus 20 21 x plus 20 21 equals 0 So it's a polynomial with 20, 21 degree. We have to find the product of 1 minus alpha i, where i runs from this symbol. Now the thought process is very obvious. Like since this is a polynomial having root alpha 1 to alpha 21, so I can tell x minus alpha 1 will factor because if I put alpha 1, I'll get this expression zero. So we must have something like. X minus alpha one, so that if I insert alpha one, alpha one minus alpha one zero. With the same logic, we'll have x minus alpha twenty twenty one. Now it's not a tough thing to check since it is true for all x belonging to real number as a polynomial, hence it is an identity. I can smartly put x equal to one, and that solves the problem. So R H S is product of that x minus alpha i, and L H S will give one minus twenty twenty one plus twenty twenty. Which gives to zero as our answer. So as you can see, it was a beautiful problem based on basic concept. The idea was factor theorem. Whenever you have polynomial problem, try to give a thought about writing in the factored format. Let us move to the third problem. F minus x to the n one plus x square. We define a capital F of k, which is integral f x dx. Minus one by k over one by k, and uh, plus the fourth derivative d four f by d x four at x equal to zero. So if f of k is this value, we have to find the sum of capital F k from one to twenty twenty one. Clearly, by looking at the problem, constant. Now before we go and try to integrate this function, which looks very clumsy. So the integration of this f of x dx, if I'll try to do, maybe integration by parts or by separating it, it's not a good idea. Why? Because clearly it's too clumsy. So there must be some uh, smartness in the problem. That's not that difficult to reveal because the significance of this limit is there sum is zero. So might be, might be. Let's check for the. Even or odd behavior of this function. It's quite obvious because we are tempted to use the King's rule whenever we have minus a to a integration. Because f of a plus b minus x integral is same as integration of f of x from a to. So using that rule, it's we are we are tempted to check once whether f of x is even odd function. So that hint is coming from this interval. Whenever you have a symmetric interval. Alpha a and minus a to a. Always check for the nature of the function, whether it's even or odd, and that will simplify a problem a lot. If I take f of minus x, I'm getting x four minus ten of x cube. Ten of minus x cube, ten is an odd function, and that will amounts to x ln of one plus x square. Replacing x with minus x, minus x will become plus x. And it can be clearly seen. So we have x four into this. So it's clearly saying this. I'll take minus common. We are back to f of x. So f of x is an odd function. 
and f of x is an odd function it means f0 has to be 0 since a function is nicely differentiable and there is no danger of domain in between so obviously we can it will be symmetric about origin t from minus 1 to 1 whatever area we have in this region exactly will have negative area so their summation will be 0 so this part simply goes off now what about the fourth derivative do I need to differentiate it four times? Well, you may do, but that's not the smart way. Since we already know f of x is an even function, since we know f of x is odd function, so its derivative will be even. Now, since f dash x is even function, so again its double derivative will be odd. Since double derivative is odd, so its triple derivative must be even. Since triple derivative is even, so its fourth derivative must be odd. So again I can tell whatever may be the fourth derivative of x, it's again, obviously it has to pass through origin. Let's call fourth derivative is g of x, it's an odd function, so g of 0 must be 0. Because the function is continuous and differentiable in its domain here. Right, so this part still kicks off. The quick proof of this will be you can call and vice versa. So let's say f dash x is some function phi of x since f of x is odd so f of x is minus f of minus x if i differentiate it will get f dash x is minus of f dash minus x into minus 1 which will give f dash x equals f dash minus x hence phi x equals phi of minus x so the derivative of even function is odd and odd is even think about its integration here we come with the next question we have to find the largest value of y over x if x minus 3 whole square plus y minus 3 whole square equals 6 now clearly we can see this guy is a circle centered at 3 comma 3 and the radius is root 6 now root 6 distance is clearly less than distance of origin from 3 comma 6 so it will be exactly in the first quadrant now we have to maximize y y x what does it mean we'll have a point here x naught y naught corresponding to this i'll get a value of y y x let's call this as a s which is dependent on x so corresponding to this in this set we'll have a value again we'll have another point x1 comma y1 which will be on this curve Again, we'll have another point. We'll have another point here. So again, we can calculate its y coordinate and x coordinate and can divide. So what will be the largest value of y by x? Now it's no wonder what does y by x represents. We take a point x comma y on the circle. So what is y by x? It can be written as y minus zero by x minus zero. So geometrically, y by x represents the slope of a line connecting point zero zero to x y. right so this slope if i call this to be theta i want to maximize tan theta now, now what condition it will maximize it's very easy to see that as this point keeps on dancing on this curve the maximum value will attain when it is a tangent so we need to find the theta or the value of slope corresponding to this value so x is special and y is special Now this slope is not that difficult to find. You can do it in many ways. The one way is we can connect this with the center and we can calculate this angle. And this angle is already known to us because it's center. So this is pi by 4. So once we know pi by 4 plus that additional angle will give the full angle. So let's call that entire angle is phi. So I can tell phi is equal to pi by 4 plus this angle. Let's call it psi. Now tensor is perpendicular by base, but base is not known. In fact, we can calculate this base as well by root S1 property, or we can indirectly find the value of psi by this radius sine theta is perpendicular by hypotenuse. So that distance sine phi we know, sorry, sine psi is that radius, which is root six divided by three root two which is a distance of center from origin 
so which gives you 1 by root 3 so sin psi once we know it's 1 by root 3 it's easy to check we can get 10 psi 10 psi will be 1 by root 2 so we have phi equal to pi by 4 plus sin psi says that 10 psi is 1 by root 2 so we need to find 10 phi which is 10a plus 10b so 1 plus 10 psi by 10a minus 10b 1 minus root 2 and that is going to give you root 2 plus 1 by root 2 minus 1 and that's our answer let us move to the next question the minimum distance between the curve y equal to ln x and y equal to e to the power x now again we can recognize that ln x and e to the power x are inverse of each other this curve is e to the power x so they are mirror image of each other the curve we know from the general theory will occur along the common normal now why it should occur on the common normal let us see a quick proof from the physics point of view imagine these curves are the smooth curve with no friction it's a frictionless curve and there is a bead which is sliding over this let us join with the spring of a stiffness a k now we want the minimum distance obviously as long the minimum distance will be a configuration taken by a spring when the resultant force will be zero or when it is in a stable equilibrium why because the spring system will try to minimize its potential energy and hence gain a stable equilibrium suppose if this is the minimum distance so we'll have a force along this similarly a spring is stretched kx so the component of force along the tangential direction of the curve is still exist so it is ks cos theta as long as this component exists the spring will keep on sliding and the things will not be equilibrium it will attain equilibrium if and only if this is possible if this spring is normal at that point the same logic you can be given to at this point so it must occur on the where so let's say this point on the curve is a comma ln a so that point on the curve will automatically be ln a comma a which is no wonder because if i'll put x as ln a e to the power x will give a so this is a point p and q because if point p is known point q will already be known now what is the slope of line joining p and q? 2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 which gives you negative 1 so this line is perpendicular to the line y equals x since it is a perpendicular and it has to be the common normal for minimum distance so the slope of tangent at this point p must be equal to slope of tangent for y equal to x and the slope for y equals x is 1 hence we have y equal to ln x y dash is 1 by x that must be equal to 1 which gives x equals 1 so the coordinate of the point a because we are evaluating at x equal to a so which gives a equals 1 the point must be a 1 comma ln 1 0 and 0 comma 1 so the reality is if the curve for this curve to have minimum distance one point must be at 1 comma 0 other must be at 0 comma 1 hence minimum distance gives a 0 root 2 and that's the answer for our problem if you have enjoyed problem welcome with next video very soon please do comment thank you